My name is Peter Fisk, and I am the author of Put Your Science to Work, a Take Charge Career Guide for Scientists. And uh, I'm also the CEO of Pax Water Technologies, which is a startup company in the San Francisco Bay Area in the United States. And um, a lot of people ask me why I wrote the book, Put Your Science to Work, and frankly, it was because my own job search was such a struggle. And so I, um, in the course of doing my own job search, put down in notes all the things I was learning, and that turned into my book. Well, first of all, in the United States, and it's certainly true in Europe as well, there is a sort of st still pervasive belief that most people who get their PhDs stay in academia for the rest of their lives. In the United States, fewer than 20 percent are still in academia after 10 years. So in the United States, most PhDs go on to non-academic career paths. So that might be industry research, or it might be a wide range of career fields. In Europe, there's a higher fraction of people who end up and stay in academia, but I think that we can expect to see a greater fraction of PhDs in the sciences in, in particular move on to non-academic career paths in Europe in the future. Well, when I wrote the article Enterprising Science, um, what I was trying to get early career scientists to think about is more than just an academic career. Because, of course, you can have a very pr productive academic career, but there are a lot of other links you can make outside of academia. So, for example, um, if you're interested in how your research may connect to the outside world, a very um, helpful activity is actually trying to engage in some professional consulting. Now, I know most young scientists think, well, that's what professors do, that uh, I'm just a grad student or I'm just a postdoc. But in fact, grad students and postdocs actually know a lot of very specific and valuable information. As, as many of them know, you're actually at the front of the scientific enterprise, much more than your advisor sometimes. So I suggest that consulting is one way for people to explore. In the United States, our universities have realized that the amount of research that we do uh, is, is large and thus can be uh, exploited and commercialized. And so in the United States, we have technology transfer offices at most major universities. And these offices work with researchers to help patent their discoveries and then try to find a, um, a commercial entity to perhaps license or even take the technology and start a company with it. Now, what I also find is that uh, a lot of young scientists are also interested in starting companies themselves. And in fact, um, I think young scientists are in a great place to start a company because whereas the professor um, may be the head of the laboratory, they've got a job. But the young scientist, the grad student, or the postdoc, you know, they need jobs. And so actually taking a piece of technology outside the laboratory, outside the university, and trying to actually start a company can be a very exciting um, prospect for them. You know, um, an MBA is a big investment in time. And uh, I think that each, each person has to come to that question on their own. I think in the United States, we don't do a very good job of preparing our PhDs with just the basics of business education. So for example, I don't think it's necessary to give PhDs an entire MBA program, but I think for in as little as three or four weeks, a lot of PhDs could be exposed to the basics of marketing, uh, finance, um, as well as the legal aspects of tech transfer. And I think that early career scientists would be much better empowered if they had that experience. So for example, um, if you are at a university that does have an MBA program, maybe you can just you know, sneak across campus and sit in on a few classes. You may not necessarily need to um, you know, actually enroll in a program to start getting the benefits. The other thing I'm seeing is that more PhD, uh, sorry, more MBA programs are actually looking for PhDs to partner. So for example, in the United States, uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, has an active program in entrepreneurship where they have MBA students team up with PhD students. And in fact, a number of very successful companies have come out of that enterprise. Well, that's a great question for every young scientist to ask is what is the sort of the innovation uh, culture at my university? Some universities in, in Europe and in Belgium probably have very strong innovation cultures. And one, one sign would be, is there a track record? of people starting companies or licensing technology from the university? It's an easy question to ask a department chair or a dean. Um, another question would be, is there a business school uh, associated with the university? Because if there's a business school, there are business school students 
and many of the students would be interested in seeing how there could be some potential commercialization of the technology going on in the university. Um, and then I think another thing is universities that are situated in urban centers with a lot of commercial activity tend to have more of an advantage simply because there are more um, people around, there's more financing available. Um, and so that's a trade-off that you can look at. In the United States, we have some very strong schools that are, you know, in, in rural settings. But I think some of our strongest uh, schools for technology commercialization, MIT, Berkeley, Stanford, those schools tend to be in urban centers where you have a lot of local business people there to help. Well, there are two programs that I'm involved with that are really exciting. One um, is called the Berkeley Postdoc Entrepreneurship Program. And this program was actually started by the postdocs themselves. Uh, and they were recruited, they were recruited me and other business people because they were eager to learn about the practical issues of entrepreneurship. And ironically, you know, um, they couldn't go to the business school. The business school is full of business school students. So the enterprising postdocs decided to essentially create a mini MBA program for themselves. And that's what BPEP is. Uh, and so we every month have, have workshops. We have a day-long um, intensive for people who are actually working on starting companies. And in fact, as we've done the census, we find many um, postdocs at UC Berkeley are working on directly commercializable technology, and a significant fraction of them are interested in starting their own com companies. The other program is called PIPE, and that's called the Postdoc Industry Exploration Project. And literally what it is is 40 um, postdocs get in a bus every month and they drive over to a local company. So 40 postdocs from UC Berkeley go to Google or to Apple or to Bayer and they spend a day um, meeting management, visiting the uh, manufacturing floor and just learning. Learning about what the industrial, industrial world is like. And the interesting thing about PIPE is while it was supposed to be just an exploration program, a number of postdocs have actually found opportunities just in their day-long interaction with people at companies. Both those programs started by the postdocs themselves, and I think that's a really good sign. When you see young scientists um, starting things on their own, that's sometimes the best indication that you have a vibrant um, entrepreneurial environment on campus. Well, you know, I was in exactly that situation, and in fact, it's, it's where everybody is when you're in grad school. You're doing good work, you're working hard, you've got a professor, and you have very little connection with the outside world. My advice for people is to follow um, what I call the 80-10-10 rule. 80% 80 of your time, do the best work that you can in the lab. Really try to, to get through your research, do the best research you can. 10% of your work week, you should spend focused on your own development. You should try to take classes outside of your research topic area. You should try to expand your horizons. And the final 10% of your work week, you should try to build your network. Get outside the laboratory. Meet people in other departments, or preferably people in the private sector. Just the encounters and interactions you have, the questions you ask, will open up a whole range of new opportunities. And the sooner you get started doing that, the better.